AMD's Gen 7 APUs are now shipping with AM4 motherboards. That's the big news here. We have some information on the main, mainstream and entry level AM4 chipsets. We don't have the Zen chipset info just yet, but that is, of course, still coming out. So we'll have that once it's ready. But for now, we're talking about the mainstream and entry level chipsets of AM4. This is a unified chipset and we'll also run through some of the new 7th gen APU specs. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by iBuyPower and their new Element Gaming PC with a full tempered glass side window, tempered glass in the front, LEDs in the front and bottom, and it's basically a modified S340. The new APUs announced are on the screen now. The Gen 7 high-end APU is the A12-9800, which runs four of the new Excavator x86 cores at a 3.8 gigahertz base clock or 4.2 gigahertz boost. All the new noteworthy APUs use an R7 graphics chip for the IGP with the A12-9800 clocked at 1108 megahertz for the GPU with eight GPU CUs. TDP is 65 watts for all chips except for the E suffixed chips, which are 35 watts and significantly lower clock rates. The A10-9700 also on the screen loses 0.3 gigahertz off the base clock and 0.5 off the boost clock from the A12-9800 also reducing the GPU to six CUs from the eight on the A12-9800. The A6-9600 is comparable, just with still lower clock rates. We think the X4-950 will be among the most interesting options since users will be able to use a low-end CPU with the IGP disabled for a cheap and more affordable CPU solution when coupled with a dedicated GPU for max performance. The A6-9500 APU is only a two-core processor and isn't really worth considering for most games at this point. This is a low-end consumer part. Note also that the new excavator CPUs and AM4 low-end platforms will support a maximum of 2400 MHz for DDR4 speeds. As for the chipset news, the more interesting stuff for AM4 since this will be applicable to Zen as well. The AM4 shipment initially will be with the B350, A320, and X, B, and A 300 chipsets. Uh, those are entry level and mainstream. Some of them actually aren't even something you'll ever consider for gaming use cases, but at the low end, that's what we're starting with. This is a move to unify the FM and AM platforms. So FM2 Plus will go away as a separate APU platform, and AM3 has effectively become AM4 now, obviously. Uh, so FM2 Plus. AM3 have been unified into AM4. That means your APUs and in the future Zen CPUs will both use the same platform. And that means that if you buy an APU early, you could theoretically upgrade it to Zen in the future. Now, obviously, in that case, you'd want to check the official support list for CPUs on the motherboard because there is a good chance if you buy a low power C APU or CPU and you plan to couple it with a motherboard, obviously it'll need to support that higher TDP from the Zen chips as they roll out. We don't have the Zen chipset yet, but all of the chipsets will natively support PCIe Gen 3. That's, of course, the biggest news here, even though we're not really fully saturating the bandwidth in most use cases just yet. Also natively supports USB 3.1 Gen 2 and everything below that, USB 3.1 Gen 1, 3.0, things that AM3 Plus did not support, FM2 Plus did in some cases. This is a big move for AMD because, again, it's unifying those platforms so that sticks to their sort of approach of trying to make it easier to upgrade the CPU only and keep the same platform or motherboard with your system. In terms of parallels, the AMD B350 somewhat parallels the 970 of the previous platform and the A78 on the FM2 platform. B350 has a 5.8 watt TDP as opposed to a 7.8 watt TDP of the A78 chipset and even higher on the 970, 19.6, 20 watts, somewhere in that range. For the low end chipsets, the A320 coming out on AM4, that parallels the 760G and the A68G, which you may have never even heard of because they are very low end, not something we'd really normally recommend, but those are the comparisons to the A320. That one should probably be off your radar for the most part. SFF, small form factor, will use the X, B, and A300 chipsets. We don't have a lot of information on those just yet. In terms of specs, the Gen 7 APUs support dual channel DDR4, a maximum of four USB 3.1 Gen 2 and two SATA 3 ports and two NVMe lanes or alternatively two extra SATA 3 ports and two PCIe lanes for M.2 usage. The B350 chipset will support two USB 3.1 Gen 2, two USB 3.1 Gen 1, and six USB 2.0 uh, with two SATA 3 lanes present as well. And the SATA E support is apparent in 
one single SATA E slot and that can be peeled off for two additional SATA 3 ports instead if you prefer. That's done by the motherboard manufacturer of course. Still on B350, six PCIe Gen 2 lanes are available for M2 and general purpose devices and SATA RAID is supported at 0, 1, and 10. AM4, H20, the chipset will lose one USB 3.1 Gen 2 channel and two PCIe Gen 2 lanes and the X, B, and A300 chipsets will lose the RAID 10 support among other features that we might talk about in the future but not today. As for performance, we've got some charts from AMD. These are claiming equal performance in PC Mark 8 home accelerated watt for watt with an i5 6500 65 watt CPU on an A12 9800 at 65 watts. AMD is claiming 17% higher performance against an i5 6500T watt for watt versus an Intel i5 6500T 35 watt CPU again versus the A12 at 9800E 3500 watt APU. And 3D Mark 11, which is ancient at this point, AMD is claiming nearly a 2x performance gain against the IGP of their selected Intel CPUs. And note that this isn't a 100% CPU to CPU comparison because AMD used faster memory for their own test systems. And the end notes show that AMD is running DDR4 2400 while Intel is running DDR4 2133. But obviously, uh, Intel can't support 2400. So that is one fair point, though the memory can account for some of these changes. So performance will be dragged down on these chipsets a little bit, partially because of the memory speed limitation, other limitations as well. In comparison to the Zen chipset coming out later, we, from what we understand anyway, the memory speed will definitely account for some uh, sort of a semi-apparent speed loss, but they are APUs and APU chipsets even though they're on an AM4 platform. So you're really not meant to necessarily use these with AMD Zen. The Zen chipset, still forthcoming, don't know a lot about it yet officially, uh, though we have detailed the AMD Zen architecture in at least some aspects on the channel. So you can hit the channel in the description below, check out those information videos if you want to learn more about the, the architecture itself for Zen. And then as always, Patreon link the post video to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.